Hello, my name is Hayamoto, and I made this video to cast a spotlight on a mod that I really think uh, deserves some attention. I think it's getting uh, some more attention, and uh, you know, just in case there's those out there who either A, just haven't heard of it, or B, are sort of on the fence about whether or not they're really interested in it, I'd like to sort of show it off a little bit, and uh, you know, hopefully that'll be enough to sell you on it. Uh, and I'm going to do it by flying an all-IVA mission to orbit and then back. That uh, means no map. Uh, I'm just going to simply go off the information that I have available. And where am I going to get that information, you might wonder? Well, that's pretty easy. I'm going to get it from Raster Prop Monitor, a mod by Mihara that's uh, hopefully taking the Kerbal community by storm. Now, I know IVA is in everyone's bag, but hopefully this will actually come to change that because it gives us what we never had before, which is information we need to fly our vessels. And uh, that's just really cool. He, I wish that I could say that he stopped there, that he just created these monitors and they were super cool. But no, he create, what he created was a framework. And that framework you can do so much with. The indicator panels, they actually work now. The buttons, they have uh, you know functions. They have actions, they can have animations, the panels themselves, they can all be rewritten. Uh, I've actually written all the pages that I'm going to use to fly with because even though the example prop comes with a completely functional interface, I wanted one that was, uh, well obviously, you know, tailored to what I wanted, but also uh, that only gave me the information I needed when I needed it so that I wasn't sitting there trying to sift through a, a bunch of cluttered screens for information. So the first thing you'll notice here is obviously that we're taking off and it's completely boring because I don't have that exterior view of my rocket, you know what? I, I mean, okay, and you don't have the sound effects, but I had the sound effects. <laughs> You're not getting any. All right. But anyways, because I can't see that exterior condition of my rocket, I don't know a lot of things, you know? I can't see, I guess, some of the really exciting things like, uh, you know, the, the sonic effects or, you know, the the re-entry effects and uh, but at the same time I don't know about the condition of my rocket I don't know if my staging is going off without a hitch you know without my uh, overlay I don't know exactly what the fuel quantity in my tanks is so I have to kind of decide when to stage you know when do I do it and obviously you do have cues you know you have your audio cues that you can go off of I have you know pages set up here that do give me the information that I want but it still it still feels all a little bit nervous because, you know, just as I would normally set up a maneuver node uh, at my apo at my apoapsis in order to circularize my burn, I'm not going to be doing that here. I'm just going to you know be flying it by the seat of my pants or uh, you know it's the, it's very much the wild west of uh, of the current time. Uh, part of that's just because Kerbal Space Program returns bad variables for things like staging. It's uh, very useless and uh, you know you only get the right values some of the time so you're kind of eyeballing it but yeah that feels you know as many people might agree that feels kind of Kerbal you know it, <laughs> I, I kind of just like that uh, that Kerbalism is sort of a uh, a way of explaining some of the problems of the game and at the same time it still kind of adds that uniqueness to it that really kind of makes it appealing or compelling. Now, I'm going to show off another feature right here. Uh, now that I'm in orbit, I haven't seen my craft, but I might like to see my craft. Now, I, how am I going to do that without pressing, you know, F2 and bringing up that interface? And the answer is, is that uh, Mihara, he also thought of that. And uh, what he's working on right now is a system by which you'll actually be able to transfer modules, but for right now you can just double click on the hatches and BAM! Welcome to space! And, uh, and yeah, so now I'm gonna just have a quick look and uh, make sure that I haven't you know collected any spare parts and uh, that I don't have any extra parts and that I'm not missing any parts. I think that's kind of what we all hope on our space missions is that our rocket looks the way we uh, planned it out when we got there. And uh, I've always really liked <laughs> the IVA. I'm, I feel like it should be added to. I feel like there's a lot of potential there. One of the things I'd really like to see is science experiments. I don't like the fact that you right-click on them from the ship to activate them. I think it'd be really cool if we brought our Kerbals out to do science. And uh, and so, you know, here's me checking the hull and, uh, you know, 
I'm safety minded, so I'm not going to go behind the exhaust, uh, even if the Kerbals tend to be a little bit more flagrantly uh, <laughs> courageous in the face of danger. And uh, But yeah, I'd really like to see IVA. Uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> sorry, EVA. I'd like to see the EVA expanded and become a, a more prevalent part of the game. I mean, I just think it's too cool of an idea to, to just simply get out and plant a flag with. Uh, I don't know exactly what it would be. I think we're all kind of hoping for magnetic boots or, uh, you know, even the possibility of moving around in IVA as EVA. Let's really start to mix these two together. So now that I've completed my spacewalk, uh, as far as mod features go, not much left to highlight on that. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and do my fast forwarding of time through magic. And uh, the one last thing that I, I guess, like to mention about this particular mod is that uh, it does have the ability for plugin writers to actually interface with it. And in the future, you know, perhaps much like uh, Blizzy's toolbar has started to gain popularity, we'll start to see more people kind of uh, building plugins for raster prop monitor. But I think it'll take more people like myself that are really interested in writing the interfaces for it before that uh, really starts to catch on. But that's hard to say. Another mod that I'd like to spotlight here just because it helps uh, for this experience is you may have actually caught me uh, Turn it on my F2 there for a moment, and that was to set up my action group using Action Group Manager. And that is a nice mod if you're planning on playing IVA because it allows you to interact with your ship in a way that you'd normally need your right click menus. You can set up your engine toggles or your parachutes or whatever, and it's not something that you necessarily have to do uh, while you're still in the staging area. And also, it's a thing where. Um, you know, if you, you can have more than 10 action groups because, especially for people building incredibly compli or complicated vessels, you know, the action groups you may just use during takeoff and then you want new ones. For instance, I like to set up uh, my crew reports or, you know, science experiments, and it's just a, a much easier way to do that. It provides that sort of flexibility that otherwise we wouldn't have. And uh, for the final bit here, um, uh, you know, I'm well into my trajectory of return. Uh, the very first time I did this, I did not place a camera in a very specific position, which uh, I always do now. And most of you probably would have thought uh, of doing it first off, but I, it eluded me. And that was to place a camera that was pointing straight up. And the reason for that is not really to see where I'm going, but to see what's coming after me. And in this case, uh, I actually, during this mission, something happened. Uh, my One of my lower cameras got destroyed by the heat in the atmosphere. And uh, I had no way of knowing uh, what my ship looked like, so when I detached it, there ended up being an explosion and stuff, but uh, I wasn't sure if my parachute had actually survived. And so, you know, once I actually got around to launching the parachute, I used my uh, camera that was still facing up, as you can see down there. And uh, and luckily, yes, uh, the parachute was still there. Uh, I don't know what the explosions were. I think it was whatever I ejected off during my staging. I think it burnt up in the atmosphere, but it's one of those moments that I think you really get with all IVA because once again not knowing that exterior condition of the rocket really made it <laughs> you know that sort of suspenseful moment and yes I understand I could hit F2 and I could check but that sort of belies the whole experience that you're going for when you're trying to do this and uh, I really hope that some of you guys are gonna uh, you know a, enjoyed this video in some uh, bizarre fashion, and two, we'll take a look at the raster prop monitor because I think that it really has that potential to really bring in the uh, the IVA community because it's been kind of neglected up until this point. And it's about time it learned to shine. Uh, there's a couple interesting features coming down the pipeline. Uh, Mihara, obviously, he's talked about an orbiter-style orbital display, and he's started the uh, preliminary work on it, so maybe we'll see something like that in the future, and I think that's sort of the mainstream component that uh, will really sell it for some of the, uh, <laughs> the less hardcore, less punishing players. Uh, but yeah, now that we've landed in the water, once again, I'm going to uh, open up my capsule and flood it, and, uh, you know, welcome back to Kerbin. So there you have it. That's an entire mission done entirely in the IVA, uh, except for, you know, my, my minor EVA excursion, and uh, no map nodes, none of that stuff. So if you guys are looking to have that kind of an experience, then, yeah, now there's a mod out there for you to do it, and check it out. Thanks, guys. See you next time.